Uh, I want to watch the Noah Samson video. We're going to do that right now. But, like, uh, I'm probably going to get into Arcane next. We'll see. First to download into your Cortexes. I'm glad you stumbled upon this one. It's full of fun goofs and gags and all sorts of great stuff. Stuff that you can look at and go, oh, man, that's great. I love it. Need some more of that. Give me a hot... Give me a piping hot spoonful of that to... F anyway, isn't isn't Noah uh, Noel's uh, editor too? Smile on my face and a, be a full belly. Much hath been blogged and vlogged and journalismed about the phenomenon of online radicalization, whether it's through Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, somehow. You said yes? Club yeah, I mean, I, I like his stuff a lot. With He's the man. Or people on it. Right-wing radicalization seems to always be lurking around the corner, mm -hmm. being a creep and a peeping Tom, mm -hmm. preying on young, impressionable people that have an edgy sense of humor or find themselves using certain gamer words. Last week, I made a video looking specifically at radicalization on YouTube with its history of pushing people towards Towards viewing Nazi style content. And after somewhat half assingly concluding that it's not as bad as it used to be, I noticed a bunch of comments letting me know that actually it is still quite bad, but just in a different place. That place. Yes, this is 100% correct. A lot of this radicalization has moved off of YouTube to TikTok. I feel like TikTok is reasonable, is the reason for why uh, so many weirdos exist and come into my stream all the goddamn time. And same goes for even like weird versions of uh, whatever kind of bastardized leftist ideology people espouse or claim that they are. Because um, TikTok is even worse than YouTube at uh, being able to, to educate people on certain matters because it's literally like a two minute clip at most. I need to go on TikTok and the dominate the space. App, TikTok. If you're unfamiliar, TikTok is a website where people log on and do weird stuff for money. I think, I don't know. It has over a billion monthly active users and lots of different communities and content styles. I'm actually a big fan of some of the more abstract neuron fraying video genres on there like this. <laughs> But there is no shortage of awful content. Here on YouTube, making fun of that content has become its own industrial complex. Everybody's doing it. I should do Literally it. Literally everyone. But this video is gonna- I should do it too. That's like, I want like, uh, I want to spend some time on TikTok shit and just like dunk on TikTok we'll shit. Look at the more serious implications of TikTok's bad content and where it can lead you. A recent case study done earlier this month unearthed some startling trends regarding TikTok's algorithm, transphobia, and their relationship- There's a hot zombie TikTok complex? Yeah, I know. There's like a couple uh, power users on TikTok. One of them hates me, is an anti, but also a stan at the same time to far-right radicalization. I found this study through a video by Shark300. Boys, it's time to officially create the Hasanabi TikTok industrial complex like the YouTube one, okay? You already do though? You watch like 50 TikToks on stream every day? That's not enough. <sighs> Teenage turf sort of thing. Now 15-year-old girls turned rad libs into rad femmes. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. There's a lot going on. We got to do that. We have to do that. Right wings growing, Right wingers are growing buck wild on TikTok. In the description. So now I'm going to play the original TikTok from Abby Richards, who is one of the researchers, because she sums it up better than I could. And we'll touch base after that. We'll follow up. We'll circle back. We'll square, we'll square down. We'll square dance. I'm a deeply annoying person. So we wanted to examine whether or not transphobia is a gateway prejudice that leads to like broader far right radicalization. It's been pretty clear for a while now that the far right is transphobic, but we wanted to see whether being transphobic alone was enough to lead you to the far right. So I made a brand new TikTok account and followed 14 creators known to post transphobic content. Then I started scrolling my For You page where I exclusively engaged with transphobic content and I documented the major narratives of the more than 400 videos recommended to me. Of the 360 total videos, 103 were homophobic or anti trans, 42 were misogynistic, 29 contained racist narratives or white supremacist messaging, and 14 endorsed violence. Damn, son, where'd you find this? So those numbers are not good. I see now. Here's the graph showing the account's exposure to this content over the viewing period. You see right at the end of the journey, there's a little spike of calls to violence, anti-Semitism, and hate symbols, which we certainly do not like to see. We don't like it. 
It's very bad. But you might be looking at this graph and saying, okay, well, what is what is 25 racisms? What is that? Or, or 61 transphobias? What does that mean? In Abby's video, she doesn't show the content itself, which is understandable. TikTok might have flagged it if she had. But I think actually looking at this content, which they show in the article, is important to really drive home the point of just how widespread these hateful extremist ideas are and how dangerous this radicalization process has the potential to be. So I'm just going to go through some of the examples. Uh, trigger warning once again. There it is. Trigger warning. Duh. Bad stuff ahead. One example of content under the label transphobia or homophobia was a video showing a video game gunman shooting and killing characters at a gay pride celebration with the text, don't mind me just doing God's work. The video had over 200,000 views. And oh, this is like straight, you know, this is like old school 4chan posts. Like, this is like... ...section was filled with people saying, Hey, I love that we just, like, repackaged uh, this into the Zoomer, like, exactly the same shit into the Zoomer platform of choice. This is like... This is literally 2016 YouTube, or 2015-2016 Alt-Right Pipeline YouTube, but just the same clip on TikTok. They didn't even do anything different. They just literally took the same clip and posted it on TikTok. Oh my god! It is organized grooming. It feels like it's organized grooming. It's just like, how? How do they? Oh. This is good. I like this. The most liked comment on the video was beautiful. Now do it in real life. Uh, hey, what? What's up? Hello? Come on, bro. It's just a joke, bro. Gay people never get murdered by guns, bro. That's crazy, bro. Obviously, mass shootings don't happen in America, bro. I'm just kidding, bro. Oh my god, I'm epic trolling, dude. I'm epically trolling. Also, it'd be kind of tight if we did all those things, right? I mean, I'm epically trolling, though. Seriously. Wait a minute. Three months later, I literally am attending a meeting in a basement with a bunch of other dipshits, and now I feel like uh, all of a sudden, my worldview has shifted in its entirety. Epic troll time. All of a sudden, boom, you're Okay, and you're surrounded by all these other dipshits. Uh, Hello? That video you had were talked about in Deadmau 5's stream last night. Why? What did they talk about? 25,000 likes. Even if we were to assume that 99% of those likes were ironic, that's still 250 people that are essentially saying, hey, uh, violent hate crimes, uh, sexual orientation based mass murder. Sign me up. Another trend they noted was the way that this extreme content was able to be hidden from detection through the use of codes and symbolism. Like this guy pretending to cry with text saying 50% of transgenders take their own lives. This fills me with so much sadness. But the music playing in the background was Bon Hovi's living on a prayer, the part where Mr. Hovi says we're halfway there. The implication being you know what the implication is, right? I don't have to explain that. Or this TikTok with the caption, I can't believe people used to get killed because they were gay. And the song in the back was stressed out by the 21st pilots and the lyrics of that go, wish we could turn back time to the good old days. No, I'm not going to sing it, but yeah, 32,000 likes. Why? How? Parents, come get your kids. They're doing hate crimes. One trend played audio of a quote from Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, which led to the encouragement of harassment towards trans TikTok users. About 10% of the videos showed some form of support for these individuals, which is interesting that the same characters keep popping up on the pathway towards becoming a white supremacist. Probably just a coincidence. Don't worry about it. No need to look into it. It's all, everything's fine. We're fine. Three videos had Nazi dog whistles, like the 14 words, and they encountered some less coded racist rhetoric later on like this video, which showed screenshots of Google search results for three black teenagers versus three white teenagers. This post originates from 2016 when it was used as an example of the way algorithms reinforce racism, but that's not what this is. Um, here, the top comment says, well, that's not Google's fault. That comment had 70,000 likes and the video had 5.2 million views. Million with an M. Not that the word million would ever start with anything other than an M, I'm just saying it's a big number. South Carolina. All of this content was found in just a few hours of scrolling, which, if you're familiar with TikTok, is not an uncommon amount of time for a TikTok scrolling session. The article is punk- It's just like, I always want to see political TikTok, but like, my TikTok timeline is never full of that shit. I feel like I guess I just like, avoided it so frequently that... I don't know. I never see it.
punctuated with the following quote. A user could feasibly download the app at breakfast and be fed overtly white supremacist and neo-Nazi content before lunch. If the Turner Diaries was adapted into a self-help morning routine guidebook, it still wouldn't be as good at making people racist as sitting on the toilet and using TikTok for the duration of a single poop. Damn, son. Unlike YouTube, where there are a few different factors as to which content you might end up seeing, like how the home page and recommendation tab display multiple choices for content, which you actually have to click on, TikTok is pure algorithm. The For You page begins playing something it thinks you'll like the moment you open the app. It doesn't give you a choice. It doesn't stop playing, and based on how it is designed to maximize time spent and engagement, once the algorithm gets a hint of what you like and starts showing you more of that, it can be extremely difficult to stop watching. That, coupled with the fact that this content is much shorter form, most of these videos were under a minute long, means the radicalization process from casual transphobia to overt extremism has the potential to happen at very fast short time light style speeds it's worth reiterating that this content is hardly fringe it's not for tiktok discourse amongst leftists is absolutely rabid please, please please stay away it hurts my soul yeah no i mean a lot of the stuff that i see on tiktok is like, like a, a lot of leftist stuff that i see on tiktok outside of like you know uh leftist tiktok standing me or trying to or making videos about how they want to me is always like insanely like rad lib shit it's like tumblr era politics where the politics starts and ends with uh, Xeno genders. Like, that's it. That's that's the peak of politics. Or uh, or just like, I don't know, just some really, really uh, interesting stuff out there. That's just all I'm going to say, okay? I don't want to, I don't want to get further into it, okay? Four followers, two likes, weird reply. Funny how TikTok would think Hassan of all people would want to hear about Hassan. Lol, what? guy posting as we went over yeah it's, it's it is tiktok leftism is literally tumblr meets iowa maoist third world is exactly exactly these videos all have a lot of traffic one tiktok from the account white pride worldwide hey that rhymes that nice branding had almost a million views and 93,000 likes promoting overt white supremacy. And you'd think that there'd be some sort of barrier to entry for all these users that ended up at a video like this but there's not. I have a TikTok account where I post these face morph thingies that are, are a little spooky, and for some reason it does well on there, so I thought it'd be a decent sample size of viewers to look at. No, this is not me plugging my TikTok. I'd actually prefer it if everyone unfollowed me on there and everyone unsubscribed to my YouTube and people just stopped perceiving me, but here we are. This TikTok with almost 2 million views received 97% of those views from the For You page, which is the algorithm pushing it out oh my God. to people. That's basically how every post is. A platform being used multiple hours a day by a significant chunk of the human population is specifically designed to strip users of their agency for 97% of its- To be fair, I do only- You were in the face morph thing? He made a face morph thing for me? I don't know. I don't know how the face more thing, uh, whatever. Uh, I, I don't know how TikTok works either. I just exclusively watch uh, my For You page, so I get it. It's engagement. You don't have a... My experience on TikTok is swipe, hot girl dancing, click on her profile, see if it continues, you know, the same performance, okay? Don't even follow, because I'm never going to go back on TikTok. Go away from TikTok. Go back to the main page. Swipe, swipe, hot girl dancing, click on the profile. No wonder I don't have any political shit on my TikTok because it's all Coomer shit. Awful app needs to be destroyed. I'm going full Luddite and Prim. A say in what happens. And I just, I think that's great. There is a conversation to be had about the prevalence of the views and attitudes that lead people into this sort of content. But for now, I think it's pretty safe to say the algorithm is clearly a problem. Earlier this year, TikTok was documented as being a primary organizational tool for the January 6th Capitol Confederate soldier LARPer diaper shitting party. And following this, in a statement to Politico, a TikTok spokesperson said, there is absolutely no place for violent extremism or hate speech on TikTok, and we work aggressively to remove any such content and ban individuals that violate our community guidelines. Well, it's been almost a year now, and I personally think you guys need to work aggressively er on fixing your shit because it's still bad that's my money back guarantee moral of the story this video telling a quillion dollar company to do better do better you are on the wrong side of history this is activism folks in its purest form 
One clear takeaway from this study is that the original research question of does transphobic content lead to far-right radicalization seems to have been answered pretty definitively. Yes, it does. What starts with mockery and derision very quickly escalates into hateful, violent rhetoric that extends towards other marginalized groups. All of these forms of hate are closely associated within the algorithm, an algorithm that essentially knows how people think. Billions of dollars in revenue generation hinge on its ability to know how people think. Which is why this metaphorical starting block of casual transphobia being so prominent in popular culture should be alarming to everyone. I'm talking about things like Dave Chappelle's recent Netflix special, The Closer, where he compares being trans to performing blackface and explicitly endorses turf ideology. Before you shatter all your keycaps and break through your desk and shit on yourself typing a comment asking me if I actually watched it, Yes, I did. Parts of it are very funny, in my opinion, because Dave Chappelle is an experienced comedian, and his story about his relationship with a uh, trans comedian Daphne Dorman is moving. But that doesn't mean the special isn't transphobic, or that it doesn't promote a form of uncritical contempt towards trans people. People that just want to live their lives without having their existence called into question by every dumbass that is thinking of going to that open mic night on Wednesday. His closing message is basically, I'm not going to stop telling transphobic jokes until you all stop being racist, which is an interesting way of saying black trans people don't exist. This just in, breaking news, that thing that exists? No, it doesn't. This review, which I will link in the description, is very good. You should read it if you're having trouble understanding why David's message is a problem. Why framing black and queer struggles as being in Wait. competition with one another is what you do when you're sort of a silly boy. Also, these videos from Jesse Gender are really amazing. They're articulate, nuanced, all that good stuff. So watch those. They're, they're also linked. The Closer has been on the front page of Netflix since its release earlier this month. We have to assume it's been viewed millions of times, maybe billions or tr trillions. I don't know. And the people Wait. have decided. The person that wrote that is a Hasanabi head. He might even be in here right now. The Vulture article. Sorry. Craig Jenkins. David's message is a problem. Why framing black and queer struggles as being in competition with one another is what you do when you're sort of a silly boy. Also, these videos from Jesse Gender are really amazing. They're articulate, nuanced, all that good stuff. So watch those. They're, they're also linked. The Closer has been on the front page of Netflix since its release earlier this month. We have to assume it's been viewed millions of times, maybe billions or tr trillions, I don't know. And the people have decided that no, it's not transphobic actually. They don't see a problem. And that in itself, to me, is a problem because the casual it's the most cuck thing to be like Dave Chappelle's latest special was good is the most cucked you can ever be. You're either like, you either just like don't give a shit, okay, that your favorite comedian is no longer making good stuff, or you're just like deeply transphobic and you're like, I don't really care. Like, ultimately, I am willing to take on subpar content and consume it because he's either A, agreeing with me on the transphobic shit, or B, I just don't care. I just love him no matter what he does. And I will, I will get fed with the slop that he serves me. Your humor is different from mine. You were a cuck. Yeah, dude. I know. Um, yeah. When he said like, I'm a turf, I'm team turf. I was like, dude, that's so funny. Like 90% of the mother that heard that don't even know what that means, dude. Oh man. It was so, it's so funny, dude. You hear I'm team turf and you're either a turf and you go, that's pretty funny. So therefore you're just like a humorless dweeb. No turf has ever left. Let's be real. Or you're like, I don't know what the that is but it's probably triggering the lips so i'm gonna laugh that's the only thing you heard apparently no i'm just saying that like uh you know it was subpar and i say this as a dave chappelle fan a giant dave chappelle fan his latest special was literally mid okay this is how cancel culture truly destroys comedy and also art because it's just bottom of the barrel i hate can cancel culture jokes from your favorite comedians and you all eat that shit up shut the up it was funny. Stop being butthurt. I'm not butthurt. Why the f would I be personally like upset? Okay. Like it's not, it's not impacting me. I am a cishet white dude. Okay. Nothing can trigger me. Okay. Please stop. Also, the funniest part about this entire process is that like the true butthurt bitches are not necessarily the trans people or anything like that who literally were like, don't even take this off, but it sucks. Okay. Literally every single people, including the Netflix people internally, straight up said 
We're not trying to delete the Dave Chappelle Netflix special. We're simply stating that it's transphobic and also Netflix should be more careful about creating transphobic content. The real butthurt bitches were people that came to me, a person who loves edgy humor, a person who loves jokes and comedy, a person who's been a Dave Chappelle fan for longer than they've been alive for the most part, okay? You guys have not been around long enough. I have been a Dave Chappelle fan for a longer time than half of the mother in my chat being like, dude, his special was great. Shut the f up, okay? The real butt hurt bitches were the people who were like, I can't believe you said Dave Chappelle's latest comedy special is not funny. F your comedy policing. You're an idiot. You're stupid. And you're a cuck. And you're the reason why Rockstar will keep making Grand Theft Auto 5 over and over again. Because you are a consumer. Okay? You do not care. You just are like, the, the, the team sports, nostalgia, soy facing, epic pants. That's you. You think you're above it because, you know, uh, you think you're edgy. And therefore, that's a little different than the mainstream liberal, liberal attitudes. Except you're just as soy facing as the libtard guy that loves Star Wars. Okay? That's you. You're just soy facing for like the N-word and stuff. Or transphobia or bigotry. That's it. And it's still bottom of the barrel. It's our artistic expression of the lowest form. Sucks to suck. Okay? Lol, wait a straw man, bro. You are butthurt. You won't shut the f up about it. You keep talking about it, bro. You stay riding the nuts of the radical. You're literally triggered right now. Phobia of the special is not that different from the casual transphobia in the TikToks that have demonstrated their potential to radicalize people into far-right, violent, extremist spaces. And the popularity of this bigotry veiled in comedy is so widespread, so ingrained into our society, not only thanks to the presence of overt bigots online, but more importantly- Get over it, man, please. Please get over it, bro. Come on, bro. Oh my god, I cannot believe- I cannot believe he talked about my favorite comedian, Dave Chappell. Get over it, bro. Please get over it. Butt hurt. Your butt hurt. Get over it, please. But also, like, I'm literally freaking the f out in defense of Dave Chappelle. A person who will never know you exist. A person who doesn't give a shit about you. And a person who literally does not give a shit about you to the degree where he's selling you subpar content. Dave Chappelle's latest special is the Grand Theft Auto trilogy remaster of Dave Chappelle specials. Okay? That's it. Actually, that i wish it was that it was worse than that dave chappelle's latest special was the fallout 76 of specials okay straight up cash grab get the bag king doesn't even matter it was subpar and some of you sad pathetic losers were like yeah no i don't expect something better something new something unique from one of the greatest comedians of our generation i do because i like dave chappelle more than you do Okay, that's the difference. You can try to not want to see that reality and be like, oh, it must be because of team sports. It must be because he's like upset that Dave Chappelle is being transphobic. No, okay. I am individually and separately uh, disappointed in that. But besides that, as a comedy lover, I think it's really rude and disrespectful to give bottom of the barrel, subpar, hacky ass, Steven Crowder ass jokes. If he was going to be transphobic, at least it could have been funny. That's it. Dave Chappelle has the capacity to make trans jokes that are actually funny, okay? He has the capacity to make jokes about trans people that are actually funny. He's one of the greatest comedians of our generation. If you agree with me on that, you should agree that he shouldn't sound like Steven Crowder and be like, Adoy, trans women are just men with dicks in a dress, am I right? Oh, guffaw, laughter, celebration. People are literally standing up like, <laughs> Brilliant, sir. It was the nanette, but for transphobia. And anyone who doesn't see that is huffing copium. Only the useful idiots who enable them. And the fact that these idiots are in positions of power in media, in journalism, and writing books about teenage wizards. They're all over the place. Very bad. Get them out. I'm the cancel culture king and I'm showing up at your place of business and pointing to you and saying you're fired. And then I'm calling your employer. With regards to fixing TikTok's problems, I think a great starting point is a study like the one we looked at, which paints a clear picture of this connection between transphobic TikToks and this almost instant radicalization effect. We definitely need more stuff. Nanette wasn't that bad, but sure, you're literally delusional, okay? Nanette was not a comedy special, it was a TED talk. It was a TED talk about how comedy is bad, okay? I'm sorry, I know you think that it's good because it made you feel great. It was not a comedy special. I, like, you're supposed to go there and be like, I'm gonna laugh, I think. I would like to hope that I will laugh in the end of this process. And uh, 
I, I put Dave Chappelle's latest special and Nana in the same exact category. They're both head talks with like a couple jokes sprinkled in, okay? But one is against comedy because uh, they are marginalized. I think like all, all instances of marginalization is actually still joking about the marginalization itself and trivializing that marginalization. So you should not make those jokes, even if you are yourself someone who is from that marginalized background. And Dave Chappelle's joking was literally just the exact same on the opposite side, which is like, I'm just gonna be edgy for the sake of being edgy. And I'm going to make jokes that aren't even fucking really jokes, but just shit that you hear from Greg Gutfeld, okay? On Fox News. Greg Gutfeld of Fox News is making jokes like that. Stuff like this to better understand the problem and amplifying voices that are doing this work is important as well. But this then leads to the question, when or if TikTok decides that they're going to do something about this, how far are they willing to go? How much money are they willing to spend on moderation or sacrifice by turning the engagement dial from 17 trillion down to a slightly lesser number? Right now, we just don't know. And to be honest, I'm not getting my hopes up. If we were taking Facebook's situation into account, my hopes are swimming around in the molten core of the earth. The recent whistleblower documents basically show that the company could not give less of a hoot about the harm that is causing the world and actively fights against safeguards if it hurts their margins. And now they're rebranding to sort of sh shift focus from these facts. They made geriatric VR chat so you'd forget but I remember, and I don't see how TikTok would act any differently. YouTube's 2019 changes to combat extremism do seem to be having a positive effect. Even if Daily Wire garbage is still crammed into every square inch of free ad real estate on your screen, they're pretty quick to demonetize, take down, and ban content and channels that violate their guidelines. Okay, to be fair, uh, YouTube used to be dog shit at this, and they're a little bit better at it now. It's gotten a lot better, to be fair, okay? I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe I'm from a different era where, like, YouTube was a cesspool, okay? It was the absolute worst, absolute worst place, dude. It was, like, it was very similar in many ways to Facebook. Now, Facebook is just, like, buck wild. They don't give a shit. They literally just don't care. They do not care at all. They will, they will 1,000% just, like, you know, fill you full of misinformation. Uh are posting on the main that's how youtube used to be remember when youtube literally had like straight up white supremacists arguing why like uh being a white nationalist or white supremacist isn't that bad youtube literally used to have race realists like actual race realists who would advocate that like uh you know that that there is a superiority in the white race it still kind of does but not to the same level as it once was Guidelines. It's maybe a start that TikTok could try, but this won't happen without immense media pressure, just like with YouTube. So this, again, is me trying to do that. I'm applying pressure. What's up, YouTube? Today, we're going to be doing some immense media pressure crimes. You probably already know this, but legislation on technology is a little bit behind the times. Will you commit to ending Finsta? Huh? Ending Finsta. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act states that internet companies are not legally responsible for the content they host if it was published by someone else. So on any of these platforms, if you put something crazy on there, that's on you. This mandate is from 1996 when the internet looked like- Yeah, now those people are pretending to be leftists? Who? Anti-vaxxers, you mean? There are anti-vaxxers who think that they're leftists, but they're just like anti-vaxxer reactionary weirdos. But uh, by and large, no, like the, the crypto fascists and shit, they, they have just like, moved on all these other like random websites like this. So some legal updates on corporate responsibility are long overdue. I love that term, corporate responsibility. Always remember, when destroying the earth and decimating the human population, please do so responsibly. I just want to make one last point here. If the basis for this radicalization process is the normalization of transphobic comedy rhetoric, then starting there can't hurt either. So calling out casual transphobia when- I mean, we've got plenty of Chappelle stands in here LARPing his leftists. What, you think loving Dave Chappelle doesn't make you a leftist? Like, what are you, crazy? Like, someone could have like 90% good takes and then the 10% bad doesn't automatically and magically destroy the solidarity that you can build with them. I'm just letting you know, okay? Yeah, there are a lot of people who are just unable to see beyond who they uh, grew up with and who they grew up idolizing, okay? Dave Chappelle is a profoundly impactful person, especially for a lot of young, uh, especially for a lot of young black kids, okay? But also a lot of young white kids too. Comedy is anti-solidarity. Shut the f*** up.
whenever we see it is something that I feel like can be helpful simply based on the fact that we see it all the time, like Chappelle's special or Turf Island journalism, or when the BBC posts a bullshit article with flawed statistics that paints trans people as I think why did you say black? I'm just kidding mods. Please don't ban if you see this take a week off then you should dunk away Okay, ratio these absolute gargoyles into oblivion make YouTube videos about it Talk to your family about it insofar as they aren't going to hurt you if you try to do that Sorry to bring up trauma because in a few years time when these people look back and say Oh, yeah, we were the bigots the whole time. Like the shittiest Scooby-Doo episode in history. You can have some fun receipts to print out and put up on your wall and point to and say, Hey, that's, that's you. I remember that. You were talking some bullshit. You got my nine-year-old nephew into Steven Crowder TikToks and a week later he beat up a gay person. I think it's time for you to take feminist out of your Twitter bio. Okay, that's the video. That's it. I hope it was- I love you, Usam, but you don't notice the love. I just did. Anyway, but yeah, sometimes I do feel like it's time to, you know, get involved with the TikTok radicalization pipeline a little bit. Why does every YouTube video start like this? Um, I don't know. Oh, is this the guy that make, uh, made videos about me too? Capitalism. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>